Welcome to another Lumion Advanced tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be going over the essential elements needed to produce quality interior still renderings in Lumion, specifically with some of Lumion 6's new features. In researching this topic, I came across this diagram a few years back. These are essential elements needed to produce real quality renderings that match the beauty of real life. For this tutorial, I am only going to touch up on each of these steps in a general process. Each one of these topics deserves their own videos and more to truly do them justice. So we're going to start with the bottom of the pyramid, our foundation for our rendering, which is actually the model geometry. This is actually all done in your 3D modeling software. The trickiest part is finding the balance between too basic of a model and too detailed of a model. Now in this example, I'm going to use a resource I have found that can give us some pretty high quality models to practice with. SketchUp Texture is an incredible website. They offer many detailed scenes so generously donated by quality users, but not to pass off as your own or used commercially. This is the scene I have chosen to work with. The link is in the description for you guys to experiment with for yourselves. So once we download and open the SketchUp model, we can see the level of quality that's in this model. It's not the highest, but I've it has plenty of potential. Many of these models are only studio setup, meaning they've only modeled what the camera is going to see, which in this case isn't much. This is a small room, but it'll work just fine for us. Now let's go ahead and import this into Lumion. Although there are many steps we could take to further improve this model to even greater detail, this is just fine for our tutorial. So now that we have our model in Lumion, let's go ahead and set up a quick scene. Now in order to control the lighting of our scene, we need to start playing with some essential Lumion effects. Let's start with the sun effect. Controlling our sun to get the best looking lighting is essential. Of course, if you're working in a rendering where you want to be accurate, we can use the sun study as well. The next crucial setting would be our shadows. Lumion's ambient occlusion Omni Shadow is one of the best improvements from Lumion 6. Shadows are an essential part of lighting as well. The Cloud Effect Sky Brightness Slider is also useful because it gives us even more control over the overall ambient lighting of the scene. Now we have a lamp in our scene, so let's go ahead and add some lights. With the Global Illumination Effect, we can mimic indirect lighting from our lights in the scene and balance them. Also, try playing with the Styrofoam Effect. I found it useful for seeing what our lighting and shadows are doing to our scene. Here's our scene after I've gotten the lighting the way I wanted it. Now we can move along to materials, a topic I'm very passionate about. What makes a quality material? First, we want an image that is either seamless or mapped. Then, we also would like our textures to be of high resolution. Then, we need to give it reflectivity if it makes sense. Almost all things are reflective to some degree, however. The next level would be to give appropriate materials relief or bump. Now Lumion can create decent normal bump maps clicking here. On crucial materials, like this wood flooring, I produce normal maps and other softwares to get it just right. There is another step too, but it's a lot more complex. We could also mask the reflectivity of our materials to produce a more realistic uneven reflective surface by adding a glossiness map in the alpha channel. Some materials in your scene will require more attention because they take up a large part of the screen. Others might be too insignificant to even worry about editing. On transparent materials, Lumion's new pure glass can be really stunning when used moderately. And here's my scene with my materials all set. Now last is the tip of the pyramid, which is the actual rendering. But more importantly than that is our own eye. Setting up the perfect scene and camera shot can be intuitive and hard to explain in some ways. One thing you could look into is using the rule of thirds for sure. I found more zoomed camera angles can have a powerful effect, although difficult to use on interiors. Next comes fine tuning a shot with Lumion effects. Now there are too many to go over, but important ones I would recommend using are the depth of field, lens flare, and analog color tab. Now let's go ahead and add some miscellaneous objects to help bring our scene to life. Once we have our shot, one last effect that can make a huge difference, hyperlight. Now since we can't preview hyperlight, I recommend rendering at different levels and with it off just to find the one that looks best for our scene. Now post-production can be just as important as all of these elements and I strongly recommend editing the final product for fine tuning. Here are some of the final rendered images from this scene. Now I crammed a lot of detail into this tutorial but I'll make sure to revisit some of these segments for more depth and clarity in the future. Now go ahead and create some stunning interior scenes. Until next time guys.